how many of you have had a bikini wax in one of those tiny little rooms way in the back of a nail salon? You know the one I'm talking about. Well, believe it or not, it was there that I had an epiphany that forever changed the way I look at female sexuality. Let me explain. One time my partner decided to be intimate prior to getting the bikini wax because it left me tender for a few days after the fact. Once I undressed in that little room, the aesthetician had a look of horror on her face as she shouted out to the owner way at the front of the salon, Julie, help, Rebecca makes sex. Julie came rushing back. They both looked at my engorged pink parts, exchanged a few words. She decided to help with the spatula, which I appreciated. Once all was said and done, as I started to leave that room, 12 heads cranked simultaneously to look at the woman who'd made sex. I was absolutely mortified. I wanted the earth to open up and swallow me right then and there. But then it occurred to me, all these women have pussies. Most of them had likely had sex. So why in the world am I so embarrassed? It hit me like a ton of bricks. It's because of the shame that's imposed on women, shame that keeps a lot of women from fully embracing their sexuality lest they be judged, and traumatized women from seeking help lest they be blamed. The word pussy itself has a pejorative meaning attached to it, and it's often used interchangeably with shame, weakness, as in stop being a pussy. The whole thing really bothered me. So I made it my mission to do whatever I could to remove the shame around female sexuality and the stigma that's associated with talking about pussies. I believed then and only then could we embrace our essence, take care of our sexual health, heal trauma if need be, satisfy our cravings, and feel sexually empowered. So I am so excited to be talking with you, having this candid chat with you today to remove those taboos and, of course, give pussies the respect and adulation they deserve for myriad reasons. First of all, <laughs> I see there's a lot of respect in this room for pussies. Good thing. <laughs> First of all, they create life. I mean, how cool is that? The human race as we know it would cease to exist if it weren't for pussies. Beyond being a life-giving force, pussies are really, really smart. If someone feels unsafe in bed or is triggering us in any way, pussies clam shut. If someone isn't doing it for us, uh, feels a little bit off, pussies create discomfort to get us to stop. But all too often, we don't listen. We keep plowing ahead because we care more about our partner's feelings and desires than we do our own. But once we start listening to pussies, they come to life and they connect us with our female energy. Our ancestors acknowledged that energy by revering the pussy as a mystic, sacred power, since she could create life, she could lead to crimes of passion and wars in a heartbeat, and make people do irrational things. So hundreds of years ago, according to Richard Zax's book, History Laid Bare, they decided to honor the pussy by assigning her a symbol, a pictorial representation of the vulva. But as the patriarchal society took over, it decided to disempower pussies by reassigning that symbol to represent the heart as we know it today, even though it doesn't look anything like it. It's time for us to reclaim the honor that was bestowed upon us by taking back pussy power, the heart and soul of female sexuality. So where do we begin? For starters, by addressing pussies the right way. Billions of us have them, it's no secret. So we needn't pretend they don't exist by hiding them behind code words such as cookie, hoo-ha, vajayjay, scooter, and other ridiculous terms. <laughs> we needn't do that. When we can acknowledge them and we can connect with them, they allow us to fully experience that rapturous moment that releases a burst of endorphins, dopamine, um, oxytocin, According to the science of brain imaging, it looks a lot like a cocaine high that makes people feel do like they could do anything. Sadly, 
a lot of women aren't able to fully let go and have disinhibited sex because they've been taught shame around it. And others are stuck because of unresolved trauma because they haven't been able to talk about it. And what's with the walk of shame? Why is it reserved for women when guys can easily get a high five under the same circumstances? If we're too eager, we're sluts. If we're not eager enough, we're prudes. It's time to put an end to those negative narratives and all the, the slut shaming that takes place so that we can change fear to freedom. As a clinical sexologist, I can't tell you how many times women tell me how incredible it felt just being able to talk about this sexuality freely with me, sans any fear of shame or judgment. Doubly so when they find out that there's nothing wrong with them, even though they've been led to believe otherwise. Unfortunately, a lot of women get diagnosed with things such as an orgasmia, hypoactive sexual desire disorder, and other sexual dysfunctions when they don't respond in very, very specific ways, which to me is absolutely crazy because women and their pussies are as diverse as snowflakes. So while one may indeed be anorgasmic or have low desire under one set of circumstances or with a particular partner, she may be fine otherwise or on her own. Maybe she's looking for a closer connection or she needs to work through her trauma, trust issues, resentment. Or maybe pussy's looking for a bit more loving, a bit more tension, a bit more time. Better lover? Bottom line, women and their pussies are convoluted. They don't follow a linear response cycle. They don't all get off in the same way. And they put on the brakes for different reasons. Allow me to share a couple of common differences. First of all, desire, what we feel in our heads, and arousal, what we feel in our bodies, can often flip-flop for different reasons, including hormonal reasons. But a lot of women don't realize that. So when that happens, when desire doesn't come first and comes spontaneously, they stop having sex, even though they crave it immensely. It's sort of like looking through a window from the wrong side of the glass. It makes them feel flawed. Once they realize that there's absolutely nothing wrong with them whatsoever, they want to have sex, they just have to go about it differently. They really enjoy getting back in the game. And the accompanying surge of sex hormones and dopamine that makes them feel alive. And it kicks their desire into high gear. Next common difference, four out of five females are not going to orgasm from thrusting alone. But since many of them are unaware of that, they feel broken or they think that the partner is inadequate. When all it means is maybe the other erogenous zones are looking for a little bit of attention, sounds any pressure, because yes, women can have performance anxiety. When I do my workshops, I begin there because pussies are the most diverse, flexible, non-conforming body part. So we start there. We meet our pussies right where they're at as they are. We sculpt them out of colorful Play-Doh. We name them and we have pussy monologues, i.e., what would my pussy say if she could talk, akin to Eve Ensler's vagina monologues. Allow me to share just a few examples of the monologues that I've, I've had the privilege of hearing. Shout out to those who let me do this. <laughs> Time to dust down those cobwebs. I want to be respected, not used. Guarding my pussy has messed with my feelings. Ain't no trauma allowed to live rent-free in my pussy ever again. There's often a lot of laughter and at times tears at that point. But most notable of all is this nervous energy as women share what a profound experience that was because never before had they fully connected with the longing in their pussies or the sadness that they hold. Some hadn't as much as looked at theirs, let alone given her a voice because of their upbringing. But when we ignore or neglect our pussies, they shut down. But when we have a healthy relationship with them, we're able to fully appreciate all the rhythms they create to give us different mind, body, and soul connections. 
For instance, through our physical cycles, monthly cycles, pussy allows us to experience three different mindsets. Internal, external, and carnal. Internal, three to five days before ovulation, pussy makes us a little contemplative. External, five to seven days before period, pussy gives us the courage to let everyone know exactly how we're thinking and what we're feeling. Carnal, during ovulation and menstruation, pussy gives us the permission to indulge our cravings. So if you're not having sex, we're hitting up the carbs. During menopause, pussy finally allows us to live life on our own terms. The maternal hormones have died down, so women get this second wind where they start to focus on their own hopes, dreams, and desires instead of catering to everyone else's. When I hit menopause, I got comfortable in my own skin, and I stopped worrying about what anyone thought of me. One time, this friend of mine, David, who reviewed cars for a living, invited me to the auto show to give sexiness ratings to the new car models that were coming in. I heard the word sexy, and I put on my thigh-high red boots <laughs> just because I felt like it. <laughs> Didn't worry about anything, and I just strutted my stuff and had a good time with the devil may care attitude. David noticed my unrestrained energy ooze out of me and the reactions it was getting, and he goes, oh my God, I just went from feeling really proud of having you beside me to wanting to be you, to experience your erotic energy. <laughs> Moral of the story, with pussy in charge, Women need to worry about becoming invisible as they age because they become invincible. And ooh, that's right. <laughs> An empowered woman is unstoppable. But different people respond differently to her. Some can't handle her. They are intimidated by her. So they may avoid her, or they might even say negative things about her, even though they have absolutely no reason to feel threatened, because she's not after anyone else's power. She's got enough of her own. Others love to feed off her energy. And still others love to make love to her by looking deeply into her eyes, taking in her essence. I've had many men, women, and non-binary folk share with me what an incredible experience it is to make love to a powerhouse and watch her slip seamlessly into vulnerability. Her passion is intoxicating because she is present and she's unafraid of no holds barred sex. She's already dealt with anything that gets in the way of that and she's free. And if she doesn't feel like having sex, she's cool with that too. In general, she won't consent to anything or having sex with someone that she doesn't feel like because she's in charge. Many of my out and proud friends are very much in charge of their sexuality. So can you. But I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that that can be quite challenging for some than it is for others. For instance, people who raised in conservative cultures or religious households, they have a hard time even talking about it. But if and when they get the courage to do so, they light up. Because finally, they find harmony between their minds and their bodies. And they get so excited. Their yearning is absolutely palpable. What about you? If you're feeling either disconnected from your sexuality or you'd like to connect with your pussy, write her a letter. Apologizing for all the ways that you may have neglected her or ignored her need to heed trauma. Because then and only then will you change your story. Healing the trauma in my pussy was the key to me acknowledging her and embracing her as a gift as opposed to something to be ashamed of. Prior to that, I was in a horrific relationship. Since my pussy had been sullied by trauma, I felt like I was damaged goods and no one would want me. My South Asian upbringing had me entrapped in that mindset. It's a really difficult thing to lose when you've had that message drilled into you time and time and time again. Isn't it ironic 
how much emphasis we place on pussies under those circumstances when we barely acknowledge them otherwise. Bottom line, sexual assault has nothing to do with sex and virginity has nothing to do with a woman's worth. So show your pussy some love instead of having mixed feelings around her after you've dealt with whatever's gotten in the way. Pleasure is her birthright. The clitoris is the only body part that's made for no other purpose, meaning women were meant to enjoy sex. They were meant to have fun with it. But don't just stop there. Connect with your pussy power. I have an acronym for you to help you, guide you through that. Power. P, pay attention to her history, her background, her upbringing, perhaps trauma. O, deal with the obstacles that have held her back. W, be willing to explore her likes and dislikes and the nuances of her erogenous zones. E, connect with erotic energy. And R, be responsive to her guidance. She's smart, remember? Respond to that. My journey began many, many moons ago in that tiny little nail salon and has brought me here today. In the interim, I've had the privilege of promoting healthy sexuality by hosting seven TV shows, two radio shows, authoring nine books, including my latest, Awaken Your Central Goddess. <laughs> and facilitating various workshops, um, which is like my favorite part because I get to see transformations firsthand. People often refer to me as the sex lady and comment on how I can grab a dildo and a pussy puppet and carry on nonchalantly as if I'm doing a cooking show. <laughs> I tell them food and sex have a lot in common. Among other things, they both titillate all five senses and they are a critical part of life. So nothing to be ashamed of. Just as the way we view our lover establishes whether we love him or hate him, the way we view our sexuality establishes how we react to it and how much fun we have with it. My favorite, favorite feedback moment, it happened in a busy airport security check lineup. While my luggage was being rummaged through, this young lady, she shrieked, she goes, oh my God, oh my God, I didn't even know I have a G-spot, but because of her, I'm now a squirter. <laughs> <laughs> Approximately 12 heads kind of glanced over, checking us out, going back and forth between us, thanks to a lack of context. But guess what? Neither her nor I cared. My heart just burst with joy at having liberated this woman's sexuality. But since there are a lot more women out there who also need to connect with theirs, I need your help. So if you have a pussy or love someone who does, I invite you to join me in getting rid of those negative narratives and mores that have tried to disempower female sexuality. Once we can honor all parts of ourselves, we can delight in being a woman as opposed to feeling disenfranchised because of it. Ultimately, pussy is the gateway to creating new life. So let's embrace our pussy power and create a brand new world. One pussy at a time. Pussy power! Yeah.